Hello kids and welcome back. My name is Candace Teague and I work for the Art for All program at the Galveston Arts Center. There I get to work with many awesome kids at the Resource Crisis Center. Today we are going to be making this 3D art piece by not only gluing down construction paper but by also making origami. For the materials you'll need to pick out construction paper, regular watercolor paper, and you will also need scissors. This part is optional, but I like using colored pencils, pens, markers, and crayons. Oh, and I almost forgot that you'll also need glue, and if you want to, you can also use tape. Now for the glue, you can use this Elmer's glue, or you can actually use a glue stick. The first step to creating this art piece is to glue down the construction paper right onto the watercolor paper. As you can see, my glue stick was pretty much gone, so I had to go back in with the Elmer's glue. When adding glue, make sure that you don't add too much because the construction paper can actually get messed up pretty easily. This is because the construction paper is very, very thin. I also went ahead and spread out the glue evenly. For the construction paper, I actually chose to use blue because I wanted to do an underwater scene. If your watercolor paper is too large for the construction paper, all you have to do is glue down the construction paper and then cut it out of the watercolor paper. Next, you want to draw out certain parts of your underwater scene. I'm using this light green color for the seaweed and I'm using this pink color for the starfish. And yes, I wanted the starfish to be pink because I love Patrick. For the coral, I decided to use a reddish pink. Coral can be any color, so you can choose any color of construction paper that you'd like. Off camera, I actually cut out rock shapes using gray paper. If there's anything else you'd like to add, go ahead. It is your creation, so you can make anything that you'd like. When you are done drawing, all you have to do is cut out the shapes, but be careful because scissors are sharp, and sometimes some of the pieces can be really, really small. When you are done cutting out all the pieces, it's time to place them where you want them to go. I like to plan where things will be placed beforehand just because it's easier than gluing something down and not liking where it is and then having to move it. Always remember that when you add glue, don't add too much. Also, once you glue the pieces, make sure to press them down firmly so they stay in place. There were some things that I still needed to move around after I glued it down just because I changed my mind on some things, but that's the best part about glue is it doesn't always dry right away, but you do have to be quick if you do want to move something. As you can see where I'm gluing them, I am actually overlapping a lot of it. This helps to create more dimension and it makes it more interesting. Also with some of the pieces, I'm leaving the tops unglued so it looks more realistic and it pops up from the paper. When you're done gluing everything down, it should look something like this. All of the pieces have dried, and as you can see, I'm showing you the areas where I left it unglued. So now it is time to create the origami fish. For the fish, I wanted three, so I picked this orange one, a light pink, and a darker pink. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to make the biggest one. The first step is to fold over a corner and match it up with the other side of the piece of paper. Once it's lined up, you can go ahead and press it down. Using a colored pencil, draw a line where that extra piece is sticking out. Be sure to hold the flap down firmly so it doesn't move around. Then you want to cut on that line. When you're done cutting, it should look something like this. This is a way that you can create a perfect square for any type of origami. Next, you wanna turn it around and then fold it on the other side. Make sure that the lines point up before you press it down. When pressing it down, make sure that you hold the top in place so it doesn't move around. Once it's folded on both sides, it should look something like this. And if you turn it over, then there is a nice little point at the top. Press that point down and then fold it in half. Again, make sure that the sides match up before you press it down. I like to hold the open side down while I press it down on the right side. When you are done, it should look something like this. Go ahead and turn it over and place your fingers where there is the half crease. If you gently push in, it should create something like this. It kind of resembles an hourglass shape. Then you want to press those two sides down and also bring them together and this should create a triangle. Go ahead and turn your fish to the side and figure out which side you want the fins to go on. I wanted my fish to point right so I turned the fish to the left and that's where I made the fin. 
go ahead and take one corner and fold it down, but don't fold it down all the way because you don't want it to match up with the other side. Once you've found a good spot, go ahead and press it down. Then you want to lift it back up and then bring the other side and place it into the other side's crease. So it should line up with the other side. Then go ahead and press it down. Then you want to fold them onto each other like this. As you can see, when you lift your hand, it pops up. So what I like to do is either glue it down or tape it down. Glue is definitely a better option, but I've been needing to use up this tape for a while. It's really not sticky enough for wrapping and I've had no use for it. So I thought this would be the perfect way to use it up. After you have glued or taped the back, you can leave it like that. But what I like to do is fold down the back parts of the fish and glue and tape that down. So I'm just taking the points and I'm taping them down just so it creates more of a flatter fish rather than a triangular fish. Once you've made your origami fish, go ahead and find a place to glue it down. When I add glue, I only add it to the places that will touch the paper because there are a lot of places on this fish that will not even come into contact with the paper. Make sure to press it down. And once you're done with that, it's time to make the smaller ones. In order to make smaller fish, we have to make smaller origami paper. To do this, I'll take a larger piece of paper and then cut off a long rectangle off of it. So I'm just folding over a little bit and then pressing it down and then cutting to make a smaller rectangular piece of paper. Just like the other fish, you want to take that point and match it up on the other side. Then you want to hold it down and then smooth it out. And again, you want to use a colored pencil or some other type of pen or marker to create a line where you're going to cut. So this is how you make a smaller square to make smaller fish. Repeat the other steps from the bigger fish and you should end up with something like this. Again, you can leave it like a triangle, but I want to fold it. I made this fish point in the opposite direction from the bigger fish. And when I glued it down, I made sure to press it down. And I went ahead and made another smaller one. And I placed that facing the same way as the bigger fish. When you're done, it should look something like this. You can leave it the way it is, or you can cut out small eyes and bubbles for the fish. If you don't want to cut out paper, then you can always just draw them on. Because I cut out the eyes, I wanted to actually cut out the pupils as well. In order to create the pupil, all you have to do is get a piece of black construction paper and cut out a circle. Then using a white pencil, you create a curved line and that's where you're going to cut. Again, be careful with the scissors because these are smaller pieces. And then you glue them on the eye. I actually like putting it lower down like they're looking down. Off camera, I repeated this step and now it's time to actually draw on the fish. I used a black colored pencil to draw in their mouth and to draw the highlights on the bubbles. I also used the colored pencil to create the fins and the texture in the fins. Using a white gel pen, I went ahead and colored in the fins. You can use any type of supply or any color that you'd like, I just wanted to go with the white. Also off camera, I colored the bubbles blue. When you're done decorating your 3D art piece, it should look something like this. I decided not to color the rocks or the coral, but you can go in and do that. It's your art piece and you can make it whatever you want it to be. Thank you so much for watching and if you decide to make this, we would absolutely love to see it. Just post your art to Facebook or Instagram and tag us at Galveston Art Center. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys!